Okay, so we had a no start situation on the Perkins 4.236 turbo. And first we thought there were clogs. There's a, you know, the regular fuel filter here. And then you can just barely see it back there. There's the uh, separator unit. That was full of crud. Um, down in the injection pump, right down in there, that big old nut in there where that, that end feed line is, that has a little filter in it that you don't usually know about. That can get coggered up. And then over here in the lift pump, that little lift pump right there. If you to pull that dome off, that's got a small screen in it. That is also, it was pretty damn clogged anyway. But once we figured that all out, what we found out was the injection pump was not throwing the fuel up in to prime all four of these injectors. So you can, we pull the pump, you gotta go ahead and pull the radiator off. You gotta get all that stuff set back, get the coses off. And down in here, there is a inspection plate right behind this hose. It's kind of hard to see, but there is an inspection plate down there. And you can go in there and that's where your three bolts are to remove this unit. You got to pull those three bolts. Before you do that, you got to make sure you're top dead center. Fortunately, Perkins marks everything with little white mark. And say right here, that that pump is timed to that mark there too. So that mark, the top dead center mark and the timing cover or the inspection plate, you can find it. There's one right on that gear. It has to be on set to top dead center. And then when you realign this unit, when you get the unit back, it will work. It will be timed out because the, this is keyed in here. That gear is actually keyed to the shaft, the, the drive on it. Okay. Uh, we also felt the solenoid, the, the, the ignition uh, fuel shot off uh, solenoid, which is also hooked to your oil pressure, uh, was shutting it off or not working properly. We jumped it back here. We got back in here and this relay, which is connected to the dead man switch. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Right here. This is connected to a dead man switch. And what it does, I can jump the terminals on. It's also fused. If you short it out, you can... Uh, replace the fuse but when you're pushing this little switch here that bypasses your oil sender and that allows for a start if you run low on low on oil pressure it automatically kicks that relay and shuts your fuel off so we figured it was either this relay maybe or maybe the solenoid that when we were going back to prime all the new parts we weren't getting we were getting all the way up in the tank here in both both uh, holding tanks and then we could prime the injectors fine. We were getting some pressure. And then it would just cut out. And the you would go to a partial start. It would just start, but it, and it would idle, and then it would shut off. So we figured maybe that solenoid's messing with us. But it wasn't. We tested that with voltage. We found the relay was going okay. Uh, that's a brand new solenoid. Uh, it was working proper uh, with a 12-volt um, jump to it. And so that wasn't it. So we went back through all the lines that I had blown out already, and we checked this again. And what had happened is up here, that little seat washer up in the top here had gotten down over the top of the filter, and that plugged all the holes. Because if you look at it, this is your end feed from your tank here, and it's supposed to come out here. And what we were doing when we were prying the system, we were getting backflow through the return, because this is open to the top, and this is open to the top to the filter before it goes back to the return. So it refilters before it goes back to the return. So there you go. What we were doing is when we were pumping it up, it was just coming through here, it was pressurizing this. It would come down here, pressurize the front, fill these reservoirs. And literally you could, again, once the reservoirs were full, obviously you can prime these with the reservoirs being full, but you dry right out. So that's what we found, that's what we did. And hopefully this will help somebody. But there is a washer up here that if it does come off the seat, uh, it can get squeezed into the center of the filter, and uh, and then it, it it clogs the holes on the outside of the filter, on the very outside edge of it, and then that keeps your flow from going down into the into the filter and through the filter element. So that's what happened, okay. But we still needed the injector pump.
it, it was done. It was shot. It had broken pieces. So that, that, was, that was the clue that started the whole thing, and then we had to just deal with it. It's pretty. It's caterpillar yellow. It's pretty. All right.